So let's design our own Nutcracker. What is the meaning behind a Nutcracker doll? Nutcrackers originally came from Germany in the 1600s, about 400 years ago. According to German folklore, nutcrackers bring good luck to your family and protect your home. A nutcracker is said to represent power and strength, serving somewhat like a watchdog guarding your family against danger. A nutcracker bears its teeth to evil spirits and serves as a messenger of good luck and goodwill. Nutcrackers were given as Christmas gifts starting in Germany. It wasn't until the 1800s that this tradition was known worldwide from the release of the Tchaikovsky Ballet, The Nutcracker Suite, in 1892. Let's see how a nutcracker is made. The first nutcrackers were plain, purely functional devices. By the 15th century, European woodcarvers began crafting beautiful nutcrackers shaped like animals and people. German artisans became known for their majestic nutcracker kings and soldiers, just like the one in Tchaikovsky's famous ballet. This German company has been crafting character nutcrackers since 1928. Like porcelain figurines, these nutcrackers sell as limited edition collectibles. At hundreds of dollars each, people don't actually use them for the intended purpose. But they can and do perform the job. You simply manipulate a lever to open, then close the mouth to crack the nutshell. On the factory floor, they use a multi-blade circular saw to cut all the body parts out of linden wood. Linden is ideal because it's lightweight, easy to carve. These blocks are on their way to becoming nutcracker torsos. First, they go through a planer. It trims the four sides of each block, forming an octagonal shape. From square to octagonal, and next to round. But first, workers use a circular saw to cut the blocks into torso-length pieces. A conveyor feeds the pieces one by one into an automatic multi-station lathe. The first station rounds out the octagon, then forms the basic torso shape. The second station finalizes the shape. Then the next four stations sand the wood smooth so that the wood stain they'll apply later on will penetrate well and evenly. Then the torsos go, three at a time, into a vertical router. It cuts a notch in each one for the lever that opens and closes the nutcracker's mouth. Next stop is a drilling machine, which simultaneously drills all the holes required to attach the body parts, as well as the lever's axle. Now they dress the torso in a coat, which they create simply by staining the wood a dark color. Once the stain dries, they spray on two coats of semi-gloss lacquer. Every nutcracker stands on a wooden base, under which they burn the company's logo. The automatic lathe also shapes the other body parts, including the head. Workers attach a nose, then, using a router, cut holes for the eyes. Then they lightly spray on a touch of red paint to simulate a sun-kissed nose and rosy cheeks. Then, with a steady hand, they paint the whites of the eyes. And the eyebrows. Once the paint dries, they apply some glue to the center of each eye then affix an iris and pupil made of enameled tin. Now they align the head with the torso and screw the parts together. After decorating the coat with buttons and a buckle, they glue a strip of rabbit fur hair to the head. A rabbit fur beard to camouflage the notch for the lever. Then they mount the torso onto the legs, which wear painted on boots and stand on the base. Then this nutcracker percussionist gets his drum, along with arms and drumsticks.
they top them off with a hat made of spray painted wood. Most of the Nutcracker's parts join together with wooden dowels. A large dowel running across the notch in the torso is the axle on which the lever rotates. This extensive cast of Nutcracker characters comes in various sizes, and you can even special order a life-sized version. Now that we've learned about how Nutcrackers are made, let's talk about our project. We are going to focus on using proportion and value in our Nutcracker design. Proportion is the dimensions of an artwork and how the different heights and widths of objects relate to each other. Correct proportions can make drawings look more realistic if they are the correct size. So if you look at the pictures over here, we see a figure that is in the correct proportions of a human. And here is a guide for how we'll be folding our paper today so that we have four even spaces, one for the head, for the torso, for the hips and upper legs, and one for the lower legs. We'll also be using value in our project. Value is the amount of light or dark in a color. You can add value to your Nutcracker by shading with colored pencils or crayons. When you add value to a drawing, it will make it look more realistic and 3D. Here is an example of two value scales. Here is a gray scale that goes from black to gray to white. And then an example of a value scale with color going from dark blue to medium blue to white. When you're thinking about drawing your Nutcracker today, decide what you want it to be. We've learned that Nutcracker dolls can be humans or animals. What will yours be? Here are some ideas. So we see a unicorn, a soldier, a doctor, a Santa, a chef. The possibilities are endless. Just think about what you want your Nutcracker to represent and what special features you want it to have. Now let's go over how we'll make our project. We will work on this project for two art classes. For your supplies, you will need a piece of paper, the Nutcracker idea sheets, which are available on Google Classroom. Here's a bigger picture of them. So you can use these when you're drawing your Nutcracker for inspiration. You will also need a pencil, an eraser, a black marker for outlining, and colored pencils or crayons for adding value. First, we'll fold our paper into fourths. Then we'll draw with pencil and outline with a black marker. That would be a good stopping point for day one. After that, we'll color our nutcrackers and add value using colored pencils or crayons. And lastly, we'll add a background around our nutcrackers. Let's go ahead and get started now. So for your materials, you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker for outlining, the Nutcracker idea sheets that are on Google Classroom. You can use these for inspiration when you're making your own Nutcracker. And then you will need something to add color with. The best things for this project are colored pencils, or if you don't have those, crayons. Color pencils or crayons work best because we're going to be using value in our project by shading. And you can do that with a crayon or colored pencil. So shading is pressing down to get a dark value, letting go to get a medium value, and a very light value at the end. You can do the same thing with a crayon, pressing down hard to get a dark value, letting go a little bit to get a medium value, and then pressing down very lightly to get a light value. So when we add color to our nutcrackers, we're going to try to add some value shading to make them look more realistic and three-dimensional. So the first thing that we're going to do is fold our paper three times to get different sections. This will help us make the correct proportions for our nutcracker. Proportion means the size related to the size of something else in your drawing. So when you have the correct proportions throughout your artwork, it will look the most realistic. To start, you're going to fold your paper in half hamburger style. So I'm going to match up the corners, make a crease, 
And then I'm just going to fold my paper in half another time without opening it up again. So folding it up to the top. Then I will end up with four even sections made by the three folds. So again, that was folding it in half hamburger style, then folding it in half again, then opening it up. Now I'm going to kind of reverse these folds so my paper lays flat. And now I have one, two, three, four sections. On the back, I'm going to write what these sections will be. The top section will be the head. The second section will be the torso. The third section will be the waist slash the upper legs. And the last section will be the legs and the feet. So when you're designing your nutcracker, think about what you want it to be. We know now that nutcrackers can either be people, like this one is a lumberjack nutcracker. He has some fun accessories. He has some clothes that show us what he does. Or nutcrackers can also be animals. So here's a penguin nutcracker. He also has some fun accessories. So think about, do you want yours to be a human nutcracker or an animal nutcracker? Then you can use these ideas to start drawing your own nutcracker. We're gonna start with a face shape first, then we'll move on to the torso, then we'll move on to the waist and the upper legs, and lastly, so here's an example I drew of a mouse nutcracker. But let's do a human version now. So I'm going to start with the head shape, and this one will be a square or rectangle shape. And I'm drawing this right on top of the first crease line. Now I'm going to decide on the headpiece. I think I'm going to do a crown. Next, I'll draw the torso. This will be a rectangle shape that comes out a little bit further than the head shape. And I'm going to stop at the crease that is in the middle, so it takes up this whole space. Then I'm going to draw rectangles on the top for the shoulders, and long rectangles that come down all the way to the crease. So this is a rectangle on the side of the torso, and these will be for the arms. And I'm using a trapezoid shape to draw the rest of the coat. So this is like the bottom of the coat here. Now let's draw some cuffs on the jacket. And some ovals for the hands. Notice that my lines are overlapping a little bit here, so I will erase those. Now I'm going to draw the legs. I'm going to start about where this torso shape ends and I will bring my line down all the way down to about two fingers above the bottom of the paper. Then I'm going to draw a line in the middle to separate the two legs. Now let's make some boots or socks. These could be you could add detail to these with patterns. And let's do some shoes. Now I have a very basic nutcracker shape here. Let's add a little bit more detail. Remember that you can draw yours as a human like this. You could make yours have different details like a lumberjack, a cook, a mailman, a prince, a princess, whatever you like. It could also be made into an animal. Your design is totally up to you because you are the artist. But remember to keep the proportions the same. 
as this. The head is at the top, the torso is the second space, the hips and the upper legs are below, and then the lower part of the legs and the feet are at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more detail to my nutcracker, and then I will outline. Now that I've drawn more detail, I'm ready to outline with my black marker. I won't be using a Sharpie for this step. Remember that you don't have to have yours look just like mine. It can be anything you want, as long as it has the correct proportions and lots of details. I'm going to erase all the extra pencil lines that are still on my paper. This will make my drawing look a lot neater. Now I'm ready to add color to my nutcracker. When we're adding color today, we're going to focus on using value and adding some shading to our nutcrackers to make them look more three-dimensional. To add value, you can do that by shading with a colored pencil or a crayon. Markers will not work very well for this step because they're only one value. They're made of ink and it only comes out dark. But with a colored pencil or crayon, you can shade very lightly, you can get darker by pressing down on it harder, and you can get more values. Remember, value is the amount of light or dark in a color. So here's how you could do that with crayon. Press down hard to get a dark color, lighter to get a lighter color. When you're shading on your nutcracker, the edges of things should be darker. So if I am going to color in my mouse's face, I'm going to shade darker on the edge of the face. So I'm pressing down harder at the edge. And then when I get closer to the middle, I'm letting go of my pressure and I'm getting a little bit lighter. I'm going to try to keep that consistent throughout the face shape. So it's getting lighter as I get towards the middle. Now this is also the edge at the top. So I'm going to shade darker by pressing down hard and letting go of the pressure to get a lighter towards the middle. Now my mouse's head has a little bit more of a three-dimensional shape. It looks more like a form, which is a shape that has more than one side, because we can see that there are some shadows around the edges, and it does not look completely flat. So I'm going to do that throughout my nutcracker now.
ready to add a background around my nutcracker. I don't want to take away from all the detail in my nutcracker, so I'm going to choose a simple striped design for my background. You can do a solid background as well. So I'm doing a diagonal line pattern here, but you could do any kind of line that you can think of or any shape that you could repeat would also work, like snowflakes or stars, whatever you like. I am done with my nutcracker design. I hope you had fun learning about the history of nutcrackers and using proportion and value in your nutcracker design. I can't wait to see what you create.